Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at Tears of the Kingdom on the Steam Deck again, except now we're going to be looking at overclocking the Steam Deck and seeing how much performance we can get out of it that way. This video does come with a disclaimer. I will show you how to do it. I'll show you what I've been changing. Do this at your own risk. When you're making the adjustments, do it by 5 millivolts at a time. Don't go, oh, okay, he's getting negative 20, 20, 30 or whatever, this person's getting these numbers, I'm gonna go right for it. Do not do that, you'll screw up your deck, you'll potentially brick it. Best case scenario, you have to take it apart, unplug the battery, and then do like kind of a hard CMOS reset. Worst case scenario, you have to send it in for uh, repairs. So again, do this at your own risk. Now, originally I had made a post saying that I wasn't going to do an overclocking video because the only way that I could find out how to get it to work uh, because of BIOS lockouts was to roll back my BIOS. Now, it's something I didn't want to make a video on because it's it's easy enough to do, but it, again, it just introduces more potential to screw up something on your deck. And that's why I came across this comment um, from Christos. I believe I said that right, and I apologize if I didn't. Um, but they mentioned that... There's this BIOS unlocking tool that's been updated uh, for Steam Deck specifically. So I was looking through it's a Reddit post, and apparently this was basically smokeless, but it just loads it right into your BIOS instead of having to do the separate USB stick and do all that. So what I found this was uh, somebody's basically written kind of description of how it all works and everything. So I'm going to leave this linked. I suggest you read all of this before you start doing anything. But the very easy part of it is, is all you're going to do is copy these three lines of text and then you're going to paste them into your console. I'm on my Windows machine right now just for screen recording purposes, but you just copy it into your console. You'll need a pseudo password, so if you don't know how to do that, uh, I'll leave a quick little video on how to do that as well. And once it's all set up and ready to go, all you have to do is restart your deck and then boot into your BIOS. Alright, now that we're in the BIOS, you're going to need at least a keyboard or something to type on, whether it's a little wireless one or whatever. But anyway, you're going to go into your setup utility, the bottom right hand corner menu, and then you're going to see that there's new menus, AMD PBS and AMD CBS. The settings that we're going to focus on are going to be in AB AMD CBS, and then you're going to go to SMU Debug Options, SMU Feature Config Limits, and this is where we're going to do all of our changes here. So, if you want to change your voltage and undervolt, I would not really suggest overvolting. I would only go undervolting just for the sake of slightly better performance of battery life and stuff like that. So we're going to go to SV13 voltage control. Change that over to manual. And then we're going to do one, two, three settings here we're going to change. We're not going to change this setting at all. So with this, you're going to go, this is where you can set negative or positive. Again, I would recommend only doing a negative. You can dabble with positive, but you might break your deck. Now, going in here, this is where you set by millivolts. So what I recommend doing and what I did do is going by negative 5 each time. So you go negative 5, negative 5, change this to negative change that to negative, sorry, and then negative 5. So what this is going to do is it's going to undervolt the CPU and the SOC as well as the GPU by 5 millivolts. Now I've tested mine all the way up until 20 or no, sorry. I had 25, yes, 25, 25, and negative 30 on the GPU was as high as I could get. Now, what you're going to do when you're doing these negative five, negative five little increment steps, you're gonna be playing some of your games. If you can get a benchmark tool or something that will just run all of it for you constantly, even better, but just play your games. When you notice that, okay, there's no performance issues, there's no graphical glitches or artifacting or anything like that, then okay, go back out to the BIOS, step it up by another five. And then just keep doing that slowly and slowly. And you should not break your deck doing it this way. I'm not going to say you can't, but you shouldn't. Because what you're going to notice first, hopefully, is performance issues or artifacting or the deck might crash even. And then you go, okay, 
we were at negative 15 and then that's when I got a crash. Okay, but we were good at negative 10, so we'll dial back to negative 10. I'm just using those as random numbers. Do not take my numbers as, yes, those are some numbers that I can try right off the bat. Do not do that. They are very conservative numbers, I would say, from what I've seen other people reporting online, what they've used. But again, don't risk it. Just do the five millivolts at a time. It'll be tedious. It's a bit of a pain, but it'll be worth it just to know that you have a stable system. Trust me. So going down further, we're going to get to force uh, CPU clock frequency and force GPU uh, clock frequency as well. Now, they recommend do not touch these settings, and I'm going to recommend that as well. Don't touch the force clock. What you're going to want to do is change the max override control to manual. Now, the CPU on the deck is set to go up to 35 or 3.5 gigahertz. Now, what I usually end up doing is setting it to 4 gigahertz. It'll never reach that, so don't worry. But it's going to give it as much room as it can, kind of, and it'll play within that limit. By doing this, I was seeing usage in Tears of the Kingdom from 3.5 to 3.8 gigahertz on my CPU. When I tried to force my CPU at 3.8 gigahertz, that's when it was running, it was fine, but then as I started loading up a game, got to more intense things, it just shut off. Whether this was heat related or not, I'm, I'm not sure. But again, use the force CPU and GPU clock frequencies at your own risk if you do use them. I would advise not to, but if you're going to use them, be conservative. Don't do anything stupid. Again, up it by like 50 at a time. Don't just go, oh, okay, 4 gigahertz, let's go, boys. And then it crashes and you're never, it'll break or whatever, right? It's just not worth it to to take out the, the trial and error steps. Again, it's going to be tedious, but it'll be worth it. So then for the graphics card, or the GPU, sorry, not the graphics card, the iGPU, uh, we can change that over to manual, and the clock on that, I believe, is 1.6 gigahertz. Um, but again, I just upped that to 2 gigahertz. And we're likely not going to see that. As well, it's not going to be terribly useful in emulation. But there you have it. That's how you can overclock. Uh, or not overclock, but, well, yes, overclocking, but as well as undervolting. Um, again, I do recommend reading that link in its entirety before doing any of this so you understand more of the risks involved and things like that. But once we're all said and done, we just hit OK, save, exit saving changes, and there you have it. All right, now that we're into the game, we can see that the overclock did actually apply because if you look in the left corner there, the top left corner, again, I said that the uh, CPU limit was 3.5 gigahertz on the Steam Deck, but we can see it's now going over 3.5 gigahertz. But as I said before, in my testing, it's not going much over 3.5 gigahertz. There are moments in gameplay where it'll go up to maybe 700, when it's like loading or doing some scene change stuff, it can get up to 3.8 gigahertz. But in general gameplay, it's not really doing too much for us right now, I don't think. And this is just me kind of screwing around, not really doing too much, right? Now what we're going to try is to get rid of the undervolt entirely, and we're just going to go straight for the overclock, because... Theoretically, if we're giving it more power, or it has more power available, then we should be able to get a little bit more performance out of it. So, I'm going to, again, go and set this just back to auto. Or, honestly, you can just change that all back to auto, and then there you go. And so now all we have to work with is our max override of 4 gigahertz for the CPU, and our max override of 2 gigahertz for the GPU. Again, the GPU overclock is not gonna really gonna help with us at all. It's <laughs> it's not going to at all. In in other games it might, but in emulation, no. 
All right, and as we can see here, uh, the overclock did apply. You'll see it eventually. 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 There you go. There was a little blip there. However, as we can see, uh, it appears that it's not really offering much better performance that way either. But I'm going to run the numbers anyway, and we'll get into that. Alright, now getting into the results here might look a little overwhelming at first, but essentially it's just broken up between the first section here, I applied an undervolt and my max override. It wasn't a force max clock. The second chunk here is no undervolt and forcing the max clock at 3.7 gigahertz. And then the third section here is the undervolt with 3.7 gigahertz, uh, gigahertz overclock. So as we can see here, running SteamOS 3.4.8, the newest uh, stable release version, uh, we can see here that when I did my undervolt and uh, max override, uh, not the force, we were getting 27.4, 27, compared to, with again, doing the no undervolt and then pinning it at 3.7 gigahertz, we were getting roughly the same averages. We got one hot ru uh, run here that was 11.4, it was a little bit higher than everywhere else, but then the second one was 9.4, and it's about the same as all the other runs. Um, honestly, there's nothing too much to write home about here. Performance was pretty bog standard across the board. And you'll see why in my next slide, why I didn't even bother going back to stock settings and doing another kind of comparison run. So moving on to SteamOS 3.5 now, after I finally dialed in all the settings, um, now what I had done is applied my undervolt, the negative 25, negative 25, negative 30, and then pinned the GPU at 3.7 gigahertz. I didn't touch the GPU lock or anything like that, just the, the CPU. Now getting into the results here, this again would more so just speak to how SteamOS 3.5 performs Tears of the Kingdom much better than SteamOS 3.4.8 now in this case. Um, yeah, so there's really no point in overclocking in my opinion. You can see here that we did do some stock runs as well, just as a sanity check. So the top half here is my overclocked runs, and then the bottom half is my stock runs. As you can see here, there's literally nothing different about them. <laughs> like, you you could say they're the exact same runs. Like, the, there, there's nothing. One run, we got 14.3, a little bit higher 1% average, uh, or 1% low, sorry. Again, there's just, I don't know. The way that the emulation works is just not seeing those results. Now, with other games, yes, you will see results. So it's not to say that overclocking is pointless, but in the case of emulating Tears of the Kingdom, I would say it's a little pointless. Unless you're going to undervolt and hopefully save a little bit of battery, again, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Like, we're talking maybe minutes at most. So to close things off, uh, overclocking the Steam Deck for the sole purpose of playing Tears of the Kingdom, not recommended in my opinion. There's no real performance gain. Uh, maybe in moment-to-moment -moment gameplay there might be a slight, slight advantage to running an overclock, but I can't test every single moment of gameplay. I've just been testing my Mount Doom run because it seems to do some fairly consistent drops and be a heavy performance area. Other people did ask me to test Zoro's Domain. I didn't get a chance to doing it on this, but even from testing the other day on PC, it seemed like that this area was producing more drops than Zoro's Domain, in my experience. In the future, I'll incorporate more bigger areas, uh, more water bodies and things like that. But honestly, I think right now, the best recommended course of action, if you really want to play Tears of the Kingdom on Steam, uh, Steam Deck, SteamOS 3.5 is still the way to go with this one. Uh, and there's just nothing else to it. Overclocking, undervolting, it won't really make a difference. Again, if you want to overclock, undervolt, by all means, play with your settings. Let me know how it goes for you. See if you can get any noticeable difference. Just know that it comes with a disclaimer. Do this at your own risk. You can and will break your deck if you go about this in the wrong way. Doing it safely, slowly, and methodically you shouldn't have any problems. Read the guide, adjust the settings they tell you to adjust. I was going to do a memory overclock as well, but honestly, I don't see there being too much help in that regard. I'll play with it on my own free time, but 
I, I just don't see it helping out amazingly. But that's going to do it for this one. Let me know if you want me to do a full proper test with the memory overclocking. Uh, honestly, it, it, it could help, but I honestly don't think it will. It's not really a memory-driven task. But you never know, right? Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope everyone has a great day. And please, if you want any more content like this in the future, more guides on how to do things, let me know. Let me know things that you guys want to know how to do that maybe I could help explain or kind of show how to do. Hopefully the tutorial at the beginning there was decent enough to kind of show you guys how to overclock simply and safely. Um, again, feel free to adjust settings in there at your own risk, but don't, don't come crying to me if you get locked out of your deck, okay? Um, but that'll do it for this one. I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks for watching.